Chapter 7 The Flaming Rose The rise of the Scoia'tael and their rebellion created an imbalance of power in the North. Extremist elves, dwarves, and other elder races had no equivalent on the human side of the barricade. But humans hate to be outdone by anyone. The Order of the Flaming Rose was humanity's answer. It formed out of the Order of the White Rose, a military order that gained infamy for its focus on material wealth at the expense of their devotion to religious matters. A thousand Novogradian crowns bought the title of knight. Sons of moneylenders and traders filled up the ranks and it crumbled. Its knights more interested in whores than piety. Jacques d'Aldersberg rekindled the fire within the order. It is said that during the conclave, a white rose he held suddenly burst into flames, filling the attendees with awe and fear. He was chosen as the next grand master of the order and began to implement his reforms. A man of piety and a fervent believer in the eternal fire, Jacques named the new order after the rose that earned him his position. The order changed, focused towards a single goal, helping all humans and protecting them from monsters that lurk in the night. Monsters which include the Scoia'tael. The Order of the Flaming Rose helped spread the belief in the eternal fire through its selfless actions. Fanatical devotion to the creed helped convince many to adopt the faith. Every knee bent before the holy fire gave the Grand Master more power and influence. Redania realized that fanatics made for dangerous bedfellows and explicitly refused to allow it to set up its headquarters within the country. The Grand Master turned to Tamaria and Adern as a result. As the order cracked down on the Scoia'tael, it embedded itself into the structures of power, including acquiring territories that allowed it to launch attacks on the elven kingdom of Dol Blathana. There was more to this than just racism. Jacques de Aldersberg was haunted by terrible visions of the future. He believed that the only way for humanity to survive the coming Ice Age was to unite under a single banner and destroy all who would oppose it, including the Elder Races. To this end, he would form alliances behind the scenes, waging a secret war against the sorceresses of the Lodge and anyone else who could threaten his plans for humanity. He allied himself with a clandestine organization known as the Salamandra to harness the powers of the witchers and use them for his goals. Through intense research, Azar Javed, one of Alderberg's many allies, mastered the process and even perfected it. The new army of fanatical, merciless troops spurred the Grand Master into action. Open persecution of the Elder Races and brutalizing of the Scoia'tael by members of the Order provoked them. Under Yavin, a veteran leader of the Scoia'tael and survivor of the Second Northern War, the uprising of the non-human population in the Temerian capital of Vizima began. Annoyingly, he played right into the plans of the Grand Master. By starting the largest uprising of non-humans since the war, he would give Aldersburg the excuse to acquire control of the Temerian army, depose King Foltest, and begin uniting humanity. The mutant soldiers and fanatical knights would be the hammer of humanity, and with their might behind them, 
Aldersburg would preserve humanity through the coming apocalypse. All his plans were for naught. Enter Geralt of Rivia. Geralt accepted the contract for the Grand Master's head after having stopped Salamandra and exposing Aldersburg's plans. When he confronted him in the central monastery of the Order of Visima, de Aldersburg made a last-ditch attempt to convince him by showing the Witcher his apocalyptic vision and confronting him on the battlefield of his own mind. He failed. When they were found, Jacques de Aldersburg lay dead. Geralt was standing above the Grand Master's corpse. In his hand was the small, worn, demeritum amulet de Aldersburg habitually wore, the same one he gave just a few days earlier to Alvin, a small boy under his care, a boy who disappeared, a source. The death of the Grand Master broke the Order's might, reducing it to swords fighting for whomever was willing to pay. They lost their strongholds and support of the people. Their latest employer was the King of Redania, who used them for security during the summit at Loch Moeen and an insurance policy, if need be. Speculation about Aldersburg's death continues to this day. There are some who say they saw the wild hunt that day. They say that Geralt confronted the king of the hunt in a battle for the Grand Master's soul. But that is a story for another 